The Nissan Aria is a crossover SUV that's fully electric and competes in an increasingly crowded segment. The VW ID4, the Mustang Mach-E, the Chevy Blazer and the Equinox, the Volvo EX40 and the Tesla Model Y. In this video, we'll check the Aria and see how it shapes up. The Aria follows up on the Nissan Leaf that was once the most loved daily driving EV around the world. Nissan somewhat lost its way since. The Aria brings some truly unique design features, a good city driving vibe and some very useful utility design. So let's get into it. The Aria is 182.9 inches in length, 74.8 inches in width and 65.4 inches in height. It has a wheelbase that's 109.3 inches and a ground clearance that's about 7.9 inches. You can view the detailed specs of the Aria in the link here or in the description. In the front, the Aria sports the multi-module LED headlights and the very distinct grille and a clear surface section that resembles a grille element. It has fog lights below and the Nissan logo in the center that illuminates. The turn signals wrap around the front portion and that's a very interesting design. The whole section is covered by a short hood. At the rear, the slopey roof is cargo compromising yet very aerodynamic, just like we see in the ID4. The hatch has a very tightly fitting glass with a wiper. Slim LED tail lights with the amber turn signals with the letters of the word Nissan spelt over the clear plastic section. The Aria has premium material even though it may not all show on video. At the bottom of the door is the hard plastic that expectedly makes it sturdy down there. It has some ambient lighting touches on the front door with some plastic gridwork in the middle, behind which is the ambient lights panel. The dash has the stitched midsection, a large bin style glove compartment, an imitation wood strip that runs across the dashboard, which very interestingly has the climate controls integrated into it. Whatever your eyes feel, this is imitation wood. Those buttons have haptic feedback and this really bridges across to a digital experience somewhat. The infotainment system has a physical dial for volume control, a power knob and the track forward and back options. Adjacent to the knob is a hazard light control. The infotainment system itself has the 12.3 inches center display screen which the smartphone interface seems to entirely occupy. The software is surely not up to that of a modern EV and we'll talk about it in a bit. And the Aria will rely on Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This screen twists across from the center display in a slightly different shape to form the instrument cluster. In the middle of the two screens is the touch button for the 360 camera and the demo. The instrument cluster is identical to the center display at 12.3 inches except for not being a touch screen. The software on the cluster has two layouts one with the dial format and another digital one. The center display has the functions for a direct access to the climate control, a navigation option that does not quite look equipped for modern day route planning, with charging information that's really up to the mark. It then has the basic access to the sound system and a link for Apple CarPlay. All in all, it's basic software. The ADAS in the Aria is called the Nissan Pro Pilot and it appears rock solid. It has a low sensitivity eye tracking system and holds the lane firmly. Unlike some of the other systems in the market, it has an indicator that turns green when it needs you to place your hands on the wheels when changing lanes. It turns to blue once the lane is recaptured. The flat bottom steering wheel is wrapped in the perforated leather on the sides and non-perforated leather just above. It has the controls for the infotainment system on the left side and the multifunction LCD. On the right are the controls for the driver assistance. The instrument cluster offers some basic information including turn-by-turn -turn navigation, vehicle settings and active safety etc. The center console has a joystick style shifter. Alongside that is a roller cover over the cup holders with some touch buttons on the sides for drive mode selection the option for one pedal drive with a wireless charging mat under the armrest. Two buttons on the side push the entire console forward and back and underneath that are the placeholders for the smartphones. Another button on the console enables the powered cubby with a drawer within that swings into position. This can act as a tray or a place for another device. If left open, which I guess it would frequently be for at least some users, it could bother the driver's seating position. Near the mirror are the sensors for active safety. The digital rear view mirror holds a small storage where you can keep your glasses. 
Accompanying that are the touch buttons for the map lights, the panoramic moonroof and the powered shade. The driver and passenger seats get the height adjustable shoulder belts, two-way adjustable headrest, seats with imitation leather in the front, fabric inserts at the back and suede at the bottom section. All interesting material choices. The rear seats offer some recline in the 60-40 seat combination over what's a comfortable seating position. The heated rear seats have a padded armrest with the standard cup holders. The rear seats get the standard air vents, the heated seat controls and the USB-C charge ports at the rear of the moving center console. The rear doors, though very similar to the front ones, don't get the ambient lighting setup. And as the center console can move forward and back, in the rear it can pull back over part of the rear legroom. The Aria has no front trunk. The rear trunk brings 22.8 cubic feet of cargo capacity, which I think would be at least 50% more, but for that slopey roof. It can still take at least three 26 inch roller bags if negotiating a tricky load flow. Underneath the load flow is the foam divider, which upon removal should afford some extra space. Probably an extra 26 inch roller bag. In the cargo, you can expect a dual voltage EVAC, which actually has a 120 volt plug to be put on top of the 240 volt that enables level 1 and 2 charging. The Platinum Plus trim comes with two USB-C and two USB-A ports and the 10 speaker Bose Premium Audio. The single motor Aria is a front wheel drive and a motor is added to the rear in the all wheel drive trim. The Aria also comes in two battery packs at 63 and 87 kilowatt hour usable. The charging speeds are 7.2 kilowatt AC that's soon starting to feel a bit too little particularly for a large battery, and just 130 kilowatt peak DC. That would make me a bit cautious on road trips. Though on those given limits, the Aria has a fairly good charging curve. It can probably sit on the 130 from 5 to 50 percent in the 87 kilowatt hour pack. And 80 to 100 percent could be over an hour, and that's why one should never charge beyond 80 percent, particularly on long distances. It has an EPA rated range of 272 miles, and its efficiency could be 2.5 to 3 miles per kilowatt hour. Though with a coefficient of drag at 0.33, a 70 miles per hour highway range should be around 230 to 240 miles. Over 200 miles and in all those situations, it's always down to charging. It has a CCS1 charge port and it is in line for NACS with a decently positioned port on the passenger side front. Let's remind that the EPA this year has significantly tightened its testing procedures and range figures of all makers should be tempering down. The Aria can go 0 to 60 in up to 4.8 seconds in the 87 kilowatt hour battery with the dual motor and up to 7.5 seconds in the smaller 63 kilowatt hour pack with the single motor. That's modest for the given case. All Arias will have the 235-55 R19 tires as standard and the platinum trim will have the 245-45 R20. The Aria accelerates quite impressively, but for its size over 4,000 to 5,000 pounds, one does not naturally feel that acceleration as one would in a lighter car that sits lower. The ramp up of the Power 2 seems far more gradual than what we expect in a Model Y or an Ionic 5. The car only obtains all the power from the battery after about 40 miles per hour or so. It brakes fairly well for its size. I did not like the ride quality which I thought was far more firm and bouncy in comparison to its competition like the Volvo EX40 or the ID4 and gives the feeling of a slightly shaky body in comparison. Though the cabin noise could be fair comparison with the Model Y, EVs do enjoy some cabin isolation with the battery pack beneath. Probably the biggest deal breaker in the Aria is the price of the higher trims. It's simply not in line with the current conditions. The lowest trim the Engage starts at $40,980 and the Platinum Plus starts at $55,580. That'll surely run into some tough competition with the Model Y. I wouldn't be surprised if with the smallest of options, the top trim will hit to $60,000 plus. And that to me is simply not competitive. The Aria does have some very premium interiors and some good innovations for the driver, but that price difference simply does not add up for me. Besides, I do think it's a bit wanting on the DC charging front and that will limit its road tripping capabilities. I'll continue to bring these interesting cars and updates for you, right here. Do let me know your thoughts. If you would like to see my side-by-side -side comparison of the usability aspects of the Gen 2 Rivian R1S and the Tesla Model X, 
Click the link here or in the description. See you in the next one.